you know, 2005, 2015 more, but my life is so completely different, so completely, and I'm such a late bloomer because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, really. I mean, I did it, I did the undergrad, the grad, the PhD, I did all of it, but I was never comfortable. And, and you know, and out of something so sad and tragic, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. biggest loss of my life was my father using my mother, to, to being enriched with Thirty-two years later, and I'm going to be 53 this year, I get to do what I said I wanted to do. Uh, I never got that chance, and now is my opportunity, so I was never going to get that up. Work for free and work for free love, you know, but I wanted to do that. So, okay, so I grew up with parents who taught me about, my, from my father especially, humbleness and helping the poor. From my mother, it was the love of children, um, and fine. And I had such an amazing childhood growing up. But it was such a great childhood that I thought all children should have that. Um, and we were not rich at all. I knew since I was old enough to knew that I wanted to work for the poor. When I went to America um, to do my undergrad and then my grad and stuff, I had the opportunity to volunteer and to work and to look at different things and experience college life, you know, in all its glory and stuff. You know, I worked as a waitress. Um, in a restaurant because I wanted to work. Children, it was, I knew since I was six years old that I wanted to be a teacher. I, I knew since I was born, <laughs> since I was old enough to work that I was always going to work. Always, because that was what my father taught me. Honestly, for me, starting the center and volunteering, because that was what I knew in America, volunteering was essential. It was, it was actually, I think, my saving grace because it was the one thing I was good at. It was the one way to give back. I didn't know what I wanted to do with work. I was really, really floating um, from you know a temporary job, you know, teaching creative writing to teaching creative writing, to teaching creative writing and studying book clubs for children, um, to looking at a group of children that were vulnerable and marginalised and saying, oh my goodness, now I know what to do with my degrees um, and you know, it's what I'm trained to do, monitoring and evaluation. I know, I'm a pretty designer, I design programs, I know what needs, I know how to do this. And my dad, uh, was very, very sick at the time when I first started volunteering. I knew it was a matter of time. And I actually sat down with him and I said, uh, you know, I think I think I've got a job. <laughs> I'm really going to settle down here and put on my roots. And he said, where? And I said, Chuck. And he said, what? And he said, I thought you were going to be a lecturer at University of Malaya. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> anyway, um, so he was the first person. I said, no, I think I'm going to build a shelter. And I said, I was like, I, I'll figure it out. He said, you know that I worry about you, Tini. You're going to give the shirt off your back and you're going to live off Halle. And how are you going to take care of yourself? I'll say, you know what? I have a funny feeling. It's all going to take care of itself. Anyway, um, the day my father had a heart attack and he went on life support, I finished the proposal for, 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 for So that's Chalkit. And then at Sakura, I'm the CEO of the foundation. It's corporate which is different, so I wear jubas and shoes, not jubas and slippers. Um, and you know, you have to carry yourself a certain way and you sit behind a desk and you do a lot of stuff. And I was warned that you know, it would not be um, to run by down so much and doing the ground work, but you got to look at the bigger picture. So you didn't just help kids in Chalkit or you know, looked at issues of marginalized children, you actually looked at who was in need in the entire community. So, and, and looking at how you can make systemic policy changes. And actually, it's a different kind of, of reward, I think, and satisfaction, knowing that you have given funding and grants to NGOs. I'm learning what I don't like, yes, because I know what the end game is. you're the bigger goal. And, um, and yeah. I have a much bigger stage and a much bigger communities. I have different communities and more people to help. I'm definitely not the richest person, but I'm the luckiest, I think. I, I really believe that and I think it's 
a lot of it has to do with God's blessing and Berkat and being sincere and ikhlas and that's it and passion yeah, just go do it <laughs> I'll give I'll tell I'll share a story I've always wanted to work for the UN I've always really wanted to work for UNICEF but for for UNHCR because I always thought Palestinian refugees were always under UNHCR but it's not they have their own UN agency right now UNRWA and when my father was sick, I actually applied for a job at the unit to, um, to a uh, position coming up in Timor Leste. And I actually applied for a job. And I actually got called in for an interview. And then my dad was so sick that I didn't, I didn't go. And I thought that was my last chance that I would never work for a human agency. And that, you know, and there was not even a doubt where I, you know, I was going to take him. It was just doubt. And 10 years later, it was 10 years. So that's meant to be. It's, it's meant, meant to be, I think. And, and like I said, but honestly, if, if there's one thing I tell children, which I do, and I talk to kids a lot, and I love talking to kids and young people and telling them not to give up hope because I know what it's like. I know what it's like to wait 20 years, 30 years for something and it didn't happen. And then trying to figure out how you fit in because you're different and, or you feel different. And you didn't cut it up the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be married at 24, which I was. You know, but nobody told me I was going to get forced at 26, um, and I didn't have the white picket fence, and I didn't have the the family, and I didn't, you know, I thought I was going to live in America, and then I came back, you know. And if you told me that I would have children again, or children, not again, children, and not get married, I'd be like, you are crazy. It's never going to happen. But it's like the best thing that happened to me. And, you know, if you told me I was going to hold three jobs and take care of two kids and a job a third and a fourth and a fifth, I'd say you're crazy. It's now you tell me, I'm like, okay, next. <laughs> you know, it's just because, you know, you just you just make room. You just do, because if it's your passion and your love, there's always room. So, you know, and, and he was always worried I was going to give everything away and I, had, I would have nothing. And you know what? Yeah, I don't have lots of money. And I, don't, and I do give away everything I have. But you know what? I'm so happy so happy it's tough it's not like a wonderful journey okay, trust me i have bad days my kids do bad in school or whatever you know it's tough but i am the happiest at where i've been because i'm doing the things i love doing the things i've always dreamt i wanted to do 30 years later and and you know i get to meet i'm doing everything i want um so you know it took me a long time and i think if you wanted to tell people and women, I'm like, just be patient and, and don't give up. And you know, and if it's meant to be, I always believe if you really want something bad enough, you get it. It'll happen.